Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Cinegrill stage, the Impromptu. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, feel it here. You thought it was humidity. No. It was magic. magic. Musical magic. We're going to start right now. Let's, let's give a title to this magical night. If you were to give a title to this, what would you call it? Monday. Steamy Monday. Beautiful. Our first song, ladies and gentlemen, Steamy Monday. But I don't think that's much fun But you're already so hot I didn't need that California heat Oh, maybe I'm sweating now Cause you made my life so high there's a drop of sweat forming on my inner thigh I'm moist like a sponge after a summer rainfall but I can't complain at all you, you and me baby baby, baby, baby oh, it's gonna be a steamy month steamy month like to do we're gonna do we call this the ditties the ditty section we're gonna do a couple of really ditty short ditty. songs you're gonna throw a subject at us and we're gonna launch into a song so somebody throw out a subject anything at all carburetors, carburetors <laughs> thank you i don't know what that's carburetor Pouring out of my tailpipe How am I gonna make 
Cuban seasons in the sun. Right. So find us a phrase out of there. That'll be for our jazz. Sure. Swing safely home to me. Wow. Swing. Wow. I'm gonna read Robin Cuban more often. Swing safely home to me. Come evening. Wow. <laughs> Swing safely home to me. Last time you were on a swing set, you fell and skinned your knee. <laughs> swing free, swing safely home to me. Swing clean, swing, swing, swing. swing, swing, swing. Don't want to spray swing, you with bacteria. Swing, swing. You had bacteria and you might contract gangrene or oh, swing. Cause then my baby won't swing around When the night time comes she's nailed to the ground She won't swing Don't swing Swing home to, to me Be with the dead It's not your fault, ooh, swinging like folk halts, pendulum up and down. When I see you go up and your skirt flies up, I never frown. I don't mind seeing that, but I want you to please swing safely home to me. Give you a push, a big, big push. Push you so high, you land in a bush. Swing, 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 but swing safely home to me. Joe White on the trumpet. On mute. <laughs> Let's see, what do we need? We need from you a letter of the alphabet. X. X. Oh. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> uh, let's see. Anybody, a, a word that starts with X? Xenophobe. Xenophobe. And what Thank does you. it mean? Someone who's afraid of foreigners. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're French, aren't you? <laughs> I can tell by the way you drink your wine. You're Dutch, perhaps Argentinian. Well, let me tell you, son, that's not fine with me. Cause I hate you, you see. I was over by the pool and I think people were speaking with a German accent over there. And I could tell that they were maybe too tonic cause their shorts were too tight and they had way too wavy hair. I don't like those German people, no. Two world wars should prove it so. I don't like those German people anymore and I'm part German, I should know. Hey, why don't you people use toilet paper? Why must I 
bring it along in my case. We call it a beat day, and you sit down and let the water spray and wash all of your troubles away. Take off the red, the red. God bless the USA. Friend, étranger, stranger. Feel the Bienvenue, strangers. I feel the same. I feel the same. I feel the same. Strangers, go away. Go away. Just go away. a Gregorian chant for you. So uh, as the topic of our Gregorian chant, uh, what's something that you purchased that cost more than uh, more than $50 but less than $100? Mm. An answering machine. An answering machine. Wow. She gets to go to the showcase showdown. <laughs> I go to <laughs> Buy them at the drugstore. <laughs> okay. It's a, an, a, a Gregorian chant about an answering machine. A fairly expensive one. Don't know when I'm gonna get 
now And just when I feel like life's getting me down I realize that I can never frown When I see those little children and their smiles And they begin to shout Come here so I can kick you in the crotch one time. Oh, Becky, come here, we will make your bells chime. They don't understand my pain, they don't hear my refrain, they just give me one swift kick in the crotch. And I don't cry, cause I know in my life. Summertime, you're paying me six bucks, and I'm standing in the California sun. Don't you think it's hard, Walt, to smile when those kids come with all of their green cubes and file? And they kick you with all they've got. It's so hard to smile. It's so hard to smile. It's so hard to smile. Father, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's square dance time. Joe, grab me a book. Any one of those books in the stack? Um, well, let's see. What do we have? We have This is Milwaukee by Robert W. Wells. Uh, we're going to pass it out to you. A little sweater tied around your deal there. You pick a phrase in there. Just thumb through. Find any phrase you like. And that's the title of our square dance. The United States Supreme Court reversed the state Supreme Court's decision. <laughs> yes. No, the United States Supreme Court will be fine. We don't want the whole sentence because, you know, you saw what happened with the lemonade thing. So, uh, we're going to do the United States Supreme Court square dance. because you only got two girls. But that's okay. Grab them both and spin them in a world. Seven or eight men can have a lot of fun when they just got two gals. So spin them around and do see do and they'll be your favorite pals. Conservatives to the center and back. Liberals to the center and back. One core just to the middle. The only one that's black. All joint hands and circle them. Circle them. Keep left! Yeah. You did it, I'm amazed. I know, I am too. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Many of you wrote uh, words, single words on cards earlier in the evening for us. And we've put those words into a champagne bucket, which we are now going to retrieve and create a song using those words as, as lyrics to the song. Right? Here it is. You've only got one imperfection with your dilapidated face. You used to be a debutante, now you're the ugliest girl in the place. There's not enough soap in the world to wash your ugliness away. You got a global kind of ugly, just spread so far away. What's that on your face? There's kind of a ooze. It's making me sick. Would you close your mouth? Clam it up pretty quick. You imbue a certain ugliness like people from Michigan. 
You're as lovely as my Uncle Ben. That's not to say you don't have your good points, all right? That was just a euphemism. I have to smoke crack just to be with you. It looks like you got hit playing high a lot. High speed ball. No tomfoolery. You don't have any good looks at all. Not even the wino on the corner will spend a moment looking at you. My appendix looked better when they took it out, though it was puffy and blue. You remind me of my second grade teacher. She was wretched. How about that? You're a hobgoblin, but somehow I find you fetching. Only just a little hobgoblin, but somehow I find you fetching. Oh, boy. That's all there is to it. We'll see what happens. It's got a title of a song, too. Do we have oh, it? yeah. Okay, this is going to be your song, Brian. So we would like to have a title that actually came from your lips. What will it be? Something that, something that bugs you. Something that upsets you. Um, people who don't use turn signals. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Brian or Brian? Brian. Brian. Brian's song. Well, he's touched a nerve with me. <laughs> I've been waiting for years to say that. Brian's song. <laughs> Which way are you going? <laughs> Left or right Please tell me cause I don't know You buy You left me in a state of confusion tonight I can't tell which way you're going Left or right should I pass on the left, or will you plow into me? You could be making an illegal left turn, but I don't know, cause you see. You're a selfish bastard, you don't let me know which way you're going, if I could reach inside your head. I out your cerebellum <laughs> Use your brain stem as a twisty straw <laughs> Then I do that thing like quick draw McGraw and bash your head in with a guitar Cause you've driven me too far this time Which way you going? Oh dear. Let's see. Uh, anybody Irish in the audience today? Anybody Irish at all? Part, part Irish? Part Irish, ma'am, what's, what's your name? Melinda? Oh, Mel oh an Irish name. Oh, you know your Irish name. Know, Irish name. Uh, <laughs> Melinda, you're going to be Irish as far as we're concerned tonight. And uh, <laughs> did your uh, mother or father ever give you some advice as a child that was, um, you know, really steered you in the right direction, saved your hide a couple times? That was it. Marry a Jewish guy. Marry a Jewish guy. <laughs> <laughs> Words for all of us. Mazel tov. That saved your ass? <laughs> you in Haifa at the time, or what? Well, there's an old uh, Irish tune about that, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds something like that, but uh, yes. let's, let's sing it Irish. There's, there's actually a chorus that you can sing along. You may not know the words. Unless you're really Irish, you probably do know the words, because it's, it's a fabled tune. Sure. But uh, if you don't know the words, you can, you can pipe in, in the chorus, and it goes like this. Oh, lady, 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 lady. That was very good. That's right. <laughs> Let's all put on our best Irish brogue. All right. Irish brogue. Ah, that's right. <laughs> Melinda, she was single, and she was dating a goy. <laughs> 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 
Her mother said, my daughter, why don't you drop him for a Jewish boy? <laughs> Melinda looked at her mother and said, Ma, what should I do? <laughs> this Irish boy, he's so nice to me, but he's nothing like a Jew. Oh, lady, 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 Yahweh looked upon them. <laughs> and sent his blessings down. <laughs> In the form of a burning bush. And a beautiful Jewish wedding gown. Had a tough time putting the bush out. <laughs> but they did it with some wine. It was some Manischewitz. <laughs> and a little ball of twine. <laughs> The moral of the story is <laughs> If you're going to marry a Jew Beware of flaming shrubbery <laughs> And bring something to chew. <laughs> Cause with a Jewish man, you're destined for life. To dine on unleavened bread. <laughs> and spend hours and hours at the wailing wall. And the rest of the time in bed. Joe White, Jeff Davis, Michael Pollack, I'm James Thomas Bailey with the Impromptones. Thank you very much. Give me an example. How about 50s uh, doo-wop? Sure. Okay. 50s doo-wop. Okay. Wait. That's the, for the next story, can I suggest 50s doo-wop? Yeah, you sure. got it. Okay. okay. Next story. All right. Here's one. 32 cows. And now, you guys remember now. These are off the wire. I'm not looking at hey, paper. I'm yes. not making this stuff up. That's, that's the title right there, 32 cows. 32 cows ate themselves to death <laughs> after one of them shook loose a pipe on an automatic feeding machine and spilled <laughs> towns of grain. <laughs> Now, do you know why? Do you know why that happens? Does any, raise your hand. Does anybody here on the Impromptones know why a cow ate himself to death after one of them shook the grain binge and floated all that grain into their feeding area? Do you know why? Because they're they're pissed. They're <laughs> Be, they ate, what? They killed themselves no, they're, because they're pissed. No. Well, they're, they're, they're oppressed by a society that's keeping them down, Johnny. I don't think that's it. Uh, why? You could incorporate it in your song if you like. It's like uh, it's like uh, Pavlov's uh, dogs. You know, they're programmed to eat when the food's there. So whenever there's food there, they're going to keep eating regardless of... Because it turns off Say it, otherwise. You're, you're, you're right. They're, they're, they're going automatic. to eat until they die. They don't know. They have no shutoff valve. They don't have a full valve. Ah. A cow will eat grain until it dies. They just don't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> they got him, not a cow. They just, That's they, they just don't know any well, better. A lot, there are a lot of animals like... You know, you know what? Monkeys, if you, uh, if you teach a monkey to... <clears throat> What are you, uh, on the Discovery Channel? No, it's, it's true. Well, how do you know this stuff? It's on my pager. That's, that's Joe. <laughs> it's on his, my, Joe, would you explain to us what about the monkeys? Well, if you teach a monkey to <clears throat> um, self-abuse itself, to abuse itself, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah, Spank the monkey. Slap off. It, it, slap will, off. it will not stop until it dies. Wow. Wait a minute. Wait a second. 
It's a tr <laughs> it's the truth. I read it in National Geographic. I'm looking for a tape. Monkey spanking himself. <laughs> yeah, if if you have one, I'm impressed. Yeah. And I, I do. I have a monkey spanking himself. You've got, you've got woman dialing with Jonathan's tongue. running around the room right now, looking for a tape. See boobs, Michael Jackson, boobs, <laughs> O.J. Simpson, boobs. <laughs> monkey no, spanking. I got no monkey spanking. Okay, I can have a monkey spanking for you in about two minutes. I'll get a monkey spanking for you. But, uh, Would you like to buy a monkey? Barry, <laughs> what the hell was that? Would you like to buy a monkey? Uh, that's Barry White. Would you like to buy a monkey? All right, 32 Garrett. Here's the uh, story now. By the way, guys, I think it's very important. They're whispering to each other. I, he loves you too, James. Don't worry about that. That's, you worry about that later. <laughs> Try uh, to remember what you said. The impromptu. Okay, I'm going to give this to you again because we are going to create a Broadway masterpiece. We're going to start out with the Evelyn story. Then we're going to move into something else. You guys are going to Broadway. Uh, Olympia, Washington, 32 dairy cows ate themselves to death after one of them shook loose a pipe on an automatic feeding machine, spilled the grain. Cows will eat grain until they die. They just don't know any better. By the way, the cows worth $45,000. By the way, here's a number. Get in here Get in here and find Bobby and Judy Olderman, who awoke Sunday to find all their cows stuffed and dead. <laughs> uh, wait, here's a number. Good gravy. Yeah. All right. Good. Would you like to buy a monkey? Good gravy. All right, good gravy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, back into the Love Dirt Lounge. They are James Thomas Bailey, Jeff Davis, Joe White, Michael Pollack. They are the Impromptones. They say that cows have a mad cow disease. Well, I heard something that's new. When cows run out of something to eat, they need more than their cud to chew. Well, someday some grain fell on some cows, and one cow had an idea that was neat. He said, hey, everybody, we are covered with food. Let's have us something to eat. Well, they ate themselves to death. <laughs> because they eat themselves to death. Well, Farmer Brown walked out into the barn that day. He fell down to his knees. Down there to was his a knees. problem. Scourge of the mad cow disease. He said, What am I gonna do? When slaughter day comes around, I've got the fattest cows anybody's ever seen, and I'm bringing these dead cows to town. They ate themselves to death. Yeah, oh, they yeah, they ate, ate themselves, themselves to death. 